Hey, welcome to your ground instruction for exercise 11 from the flight training manual, which is all about slow flight. Well, what is slow flight? What do we mean by a slow flight? It basically is what it sounds like. It's flying at a reduced airspeed, but it's also flight at a specific range of airspeeds. And if you haven't already watched the slideshow for exercise 10, I highly recommend that you review this that one before you look at this one, because we're just going to skip over a whole bunch of stuff that's covered in that one. So back to this chart here, if we reduce power past the point of maximum endurance, example 1700 RPM, even if we increase the pitch to get more lift, we eventually won't have enough power or energy to overcome the increase in drag, and we won't be able to maintain altitude anymore. But is it possible to fly any more slowly than the maximum endurance airspeed? And the answer is obviously yes, based on this graph. And the reason this is possible is because you are adding additional power to overcome the increase in induced drag. Beyond the point of maximum endurance, you enter the condition we refer to as slow flight, a condition where additional power is required to fly at a lower airspeed, i.e. a higher angle of attack than the maximum endurance airspeed. We also call this area the backside of the power curve because instead of reducing power to fly more slowly, as you would on the front side of the power curve, you must actually now increase power to fly more slowly. It's also known as the area of reverse command. Now, why would you do this? Well, the answer is there really isn't a good reason to do this. You're adding additional power and you're increasing your fuel burn for no additional gain in distance or endurance. The reason we train this, however, is because slow flight is a condition you can find yourself in by accident, such as during the execution of an overshoot or during an improperly executed soft field takeoff. Now, before I go any further, I wanna talk about angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle at which the cord line of your wing meets the oncoming airflow. At low angle of attack, the airflow meets the wing and flows smoothly over it, producing low lift but also low drag. As the angle of attack is increased, more lift is generated at the cost of more drag. Therefore, drag is a byproduct of lift. You can use additional thrust power to overcome this drag, and this is precisely what you're doing to maintain altitude in slow flight. However, if you increase the angle of attack beyond the critical angle, the drag overcomes the lift, the air no longer flows smoothly over the wing, sufficient lift is no longer generated, and the wing enters what is called a stalled condition. So another reason we practice slow flight is to help you recognize that you are on the backside of the power curve and thus approaching a wing stall. As we reduce power, we begin to slow the airplane down to the maximum endurance speed. In order to continue to slow the aircraft below the airspeed of maximum endurance, we need to add power to overcome the increased drag and maintain altitude. So the rest of this presentation is going to describe what you can expect to do during your first slow flight lesson. You'll probably have two lessons on slow flight. This first one will cover the safety checks, entry, recognition, and recovery from a slow flight condition. First is the safety check. So the main goal of the safety check is to answer the question, am I safe to attempt this maneuver? Hazel is a mnemonic that we use to remind us of what to look for in order to answer, the, answer that question. So height, is my height sufficient? At least 2,500 feet would be reasonable. Area, are you in an airspace and a location that permits this kind of activity? S stands for secure, so baggage, passenger, and pilot, seats, seatbelts, and doors all secure. Engine, no strict rule here, but a pre-landing check would not be a bad idea. Mine usually goes primer locked, master on, mags on both, oil temperature and pressure green, carb heat check, mixture rich, fuels on both. And then you can make sure that everything else in your aircraft uh, instruments looks good and means you should be good to go. Last one is lookout or clearing turns. You'll either have to do two 90 degree clear, uh, clearing turns or a 180 degree turn while scanning for traffic in your area. That's the last bit, and you really just want to make sure that you're looking both high and low for traffic as you do those clearing turns. Okay, so safety check completed. Let's get right into it. First things first, you want to pick a geographical fix. Something straight ahead of you, preferably high up like a mountaintop or a cloud that's not moving. This will help you to keep the aircraft straight while you enter this maneuver without having to rely on your instruments. Next, carb heat out and reduce power to about 1400 RPM. Catch that nose drop and yaw, and then slowly begin raising the nose as you feel the aircraft begin to slow down. This will give you a nice transition to slow flight without gaining altitude. The first time you try this exercise, I'm gonna get you to aim for about 55 knots airspeed. Once you're on your desired airspeed, add power to about 1800 RPM, control for yaw, 
and you're really going to need that right rudder at this attitude. Keep your geofix centered and do not let it wander. Okay, so at this point you should be in a slow flight condition. We know that we need power at this airspeed to maintain this altitude. You are nose high, your aileron controls are mushy or giving slow response, you're experiencing lots of yaw, and you might hear that stall horn there. What I really want us to focus on, however, is that your pitch is going to predominantly control your airspeed and your power is going to be used to maintain your altitude. Okay, so let's talk about recovery and you wanna do these things in order. First, apply full power, your carb heat goes off as well. Pitch forward on the controls to maintain that airspeed. You're gonna need a lot of forward pressure on those controls. Right rudder to control for yaw. And then you're gonna maintain these inputs until your cruise airspeed is achieved. Then recover to your cruise power, your original altitude and trim as required. Some common errors on the recovery are the following. The first is adding power too slowly or too quickly. You wanna be authoritative, but still respectful of the engine. Try counting to two. So one, two, by the end of that, you should have full power in with car heat off. Not maintaining pitch control. This is critical for not gaining or losing altitude. So you really wanna make sure that you have enough forward pressure, but not too much so that you find yourself in a dive. Do not allow the aircraft to yaw. Best way to do this is keep your eyes out. You'll notice if you look for it, whether your geofix is moving to the left or right, indicating that your aircraft is yawing in the recovery. And the last one is not returning to your original altitude. In your flight test, your, your examiner is gonna wanna make sure that you're returning to the original altitude that you started at. So just get into the habit now of regaining any lost or gained altitude. So please review these questions and make sure you know the answers. You should be able to enter, identify, and recover from slow flight, or at least know the steps to this before you move on to the next section. If you feel like you know this material and you're ready to move on, then I'll see you in exercise 11, part B, slow flight with flaps.